Hi guys, welcome back. So, all sounding good so far. Now we need to start making it sound better. So let's highlight our pluck track. And I wanna add a bit of depth to this. And we can do that with a bit of delay and reverb. The delay will make it sound a lot nicer. It's, it's pretty dry and horrible at the moment. Let's have a listen. It's just really boring. So let's add something to that. So click on the pluck track. And we're gonna add a delay effect here. So we're gonna come over to the left where our inspector track is. And we're gonna click just underneath this blue channel EQ, just in the gray section and scroll down to delay and then stereo delay and then stereo. Now this is a plugin where you can have different amount of delays on the left to the right and that's what makes it stereo. And you can see that you've got a quarter note already as standard on the left and an eighth note on the right. If these were the same, for example, both with a quarter note delays on the left and the right, you wouldn't hear any stereo delay. So that's why they have to be different. You've got a feedback control, which just governs the amount of repeats, if you like. So the more feedback, the longer it's gonna repeat for. You can EQ out some of the low end or some of the high end, if you wish, with this control here. That's just of the repeats, by the way. And you've got an overall output mix here. So these are the main functions that we'll use, the output mix, the feedback, and the length of the delays, quarter note, eighth note, etc. Everything else, just don't worry about for now. We don't need it at the moment. So with these standard settings, let's just have a listen or solo. Quite a bit different already, so, and without. Completely boring, and with. Already sounds quite nice. Now feel free to mess around with the different notes yourself. I quite like having a quarter on the left and a quarter dotted on the right. A quarter dotted means a quarter note and a half. Let's just put the feedback up a little bit here. So it just repeats for a little bit longer. Around about 48, 50, something like that. I think we need just a bit more mix on the right side. Perhaps a bit more feedback on the right side as well. Sounds about right. Uh, let's just check that back in the mix. That's very important to do that. You can check it on solo, but you must check it in the mix as well. That's cool, just made a slight adjustment there. And let's move on to reverb. Reverb is another one of those effects that causes depth. So delay causes depth. And what I mean is like a sound sounding more that's coming from the back of the mix. And it's very, very, very important to have reverb on some elements, otherwise it just sounds unnatural. Some of the drums, definitely vocals, that kind of thing. So as generally speaking in a typical pop track or most tracks actually most elements do have a little bit of reverb on so rather than going into every single channel and adding a reverb effect just like we did with the stereo delay you don't really want to put a reverb on every single channel especially when you've got a hundred channels which is quite possible first of all it's a pain in the bum and secondly it takes up a lot of processing power so the best thing to do is create one global reverb and send the tracks that you want to it. So that's what we're gonna do now. So we're gonna to go to any one of our tracks at the moment. We're gonna press this send button here on the left. Now we haven't got any buses set up yet, and it's the bus that's gonna have the reverb on it and we're gonna send signals to it. So what we've got to do is just click the first available slot, bus one, and you'll see that Logic has put bus one on an aux track. Don't worry about the terminology too much at the moment but this is basically gonna be our global reverb track. In fact, I'm gonna just double click AUX1 and call this main reverb, just so we know what that is. And you can see it in the mixer down here. Just gonna make this a different color because it's yellow and all our drums are yellow at the moment. So we wanna distinguish this. So option C, let's make it something different. Don't know, orange for now will do, I'm not sure, that's fine. 
So now we need to add the reverb plugin itself. So click to insert audio plugin on the aux track, of course. Just going to take the standard reverb unit, Chromaverb Stereo. I'll come on to the EQ of the reverb in a second. But you'll notice that the wet mix is 100%. So dry means without any signal, without any affected signal like reverb. And wet means the affected signal. And you can normally mix between dry and wet in a normal situation. But because this is on an effects channel, an auxiliary channel, you want it to be on 100% wet because what we're effectively doing is sending a copy of the signal. Let's say we want it on the open hat. We send a copy of the open hat signal in the amount that we define on the send level over to the 100% wet reverb channel and then that automatically gets fed back. So basically we're just mixing in a little bit of the dry and the wet in that way. Uh, don't worry if you're not following this too much. It will probably become a little bit easier and more understandable once we start doing it. So we'll just choose the type of reverb. At the moment, we've only got like a one second delay. So let's just go to a preset. So click on room. You've got all these lovely, lovely presets. You can obviously make your own sound. Let's just choose like vocal hall, just for example. Just to increase the decay a little bit. You've got all these other effects like density, distance. These are all trying to mimic different rooms that you could be in. So have a play around with those. Pre-delay is the amount of time it takes for the very first reflection to come back. So if you were in a small room, that would be very, very quick. If you were in a massive church, then the first reflection will take longer to come back. So that's basically what that is, and you can adjust that as much as you wish. So it's sometimes nice to have a little bit of pre-delay because then you've got a bit of distinction between the very first sound that comes out of the person's mouth or the instrument, so the dry signal, and then a slight delay before the first reflection comes back. So you've got a little bit of distinction there between the two. You can also adjust the attack of the delay and the attack of the first sound, all sorts of things, but we're sort of getting into more advanced stuff. So if we play this, we won't get any reverb as yet because we've not sent anything to this. So we need to send up this bus send level. And now you can see the reverb appearing and you can hear it as well. So obviously that's a bit too much. We'll just flatten off this EQ. You can EQ the reverb here. So this EQ is very, very similar to the other re EQ we've already spoken about. The only thing you might want to do here is just reduce the low ends of the reverb because reverberations on low frequencies tends to, again, muddy up your low end, which we don't want. So we'll just bring this down, you know, starting off at 600 or so, just bring that right down. So now it's just a matter of going in and adjusting the reverb to taste. So that's without any. You want just a little bit. And another little trick is rather than going into each individual one and adding a send and adjusting the send level, we can do this all at once. So just highlight them all by highlighting the top one, then holding shift and clicking on the bottom one. And let's have a look at the mixer. We can do this in the mixer as well. So now all four are highlighted apart from the open hat, which we've already done. And let's add a bus, bus one, main reverb. And you can see that's now been added to all four channels. So that's a lot quicker. We can also increase the send on all four channels as well, just as a starting point. And then we can go in and adjust the different levels accordingly afterwards. So let's have a listen to the snare. That's a bit too much. without just want a little bit of space in the background there and etc etc we'll do the same for the rest just going to quickly go into chroma verb and turn down the decay it's just a little bit too much three and a half seconds maybe two and a half seconds is a bit better 
Yeah, that's about right. Too much on the clap. And let's do our pluck as well. Our pluck's already got delay on it, but we need a bit of reverb as well. You can really make it sound nice. You can go way too much if you want. Just depends what your track requires. Just sounds really nice now with that delay and reverb. So much better than before. So let's just show you what that sounds like with the pluck with its delay and reverb turned off. So we'll turn off the delay and the reverb. And it's super boring. Let's turn them back on again. And in the mix. I think the delay is just a touch too much. So let's just turn down a little bit. And we're good to go. So you notice that I didn't put any on the kick because that's a very low end element, as in low frequency. You can put some on the kick if you wish, just if you do, make sure it's only a tiny amount. And that could give a little bit of space around that kick, but really it must be not very much at all. Just scroll down there on the mixer using the right hand scroll slider so we know where we're on kick. And we can add a tiny bit if we wish. Obviously don't want that. I really don't like much at all on the kick, if any. Okay, that's cool for this lesson. I'll see you in the next one. Hope that was useful. All the best, guys. Bye-bye.